I made a fool of myself yesterday and my hip won't let me lie. See that? You know that? That's coffee. One bump. See that? I finally got my phone cleaned off. And all of that from one bump. And that whole unreal. So yesterday was a fun day. It made me think about conformity because I'm the type of guy or the type of person that's uh, gotten easily embarrassed in the past because I'm so worried about what everybody else thinks. I said I hit a bump and that coffee went everywhere. Nah, not really. I hit a big light pole in a parking lot that's painted yellow and I barely bumped it and it just hit where you plug in the, the uh, hitch. So it didn't do any damage. But uh, I didn't want to tell you that uh, <laughs> I hit a light pole in the middle of a parking lot or backed into it. I also didn't want to stick around to see what people's looks would be. So instead of cleaning up the coffee or stopping to assess, I just drove off like it never happened. But it was the start of a funny day. Not so funny for me, I'm actually, my hips kind of sore. And I'll explain that in a minute. So. I get up, get dressed, feeling pretty good, off and going, gonna get some coffee, do a little study, get ready for class yesterday morning, and uh, back into, the, after I get my coffee, it's, uh, I don't pay that much for coffee usually, but man, that was a good cup, and somehow through that little hole, it sprayed all over the place. Hold on, I gotta stop and close this toolbox. Driving me crazy. Tools rattling everywhere. Anyway, so that's how the day started yesterday with the big coffee spill through that tiny hole that seems to defy physics, but I did it. Then I get into class. Class starts around 10 o'clock. I'm in there cleaning up. Well, I come back to the car, try to clean it up, try to clean up my shirt and get all that off. It ain't happening, so I had Gabriel, my youngest son, bring me a clean shirt when he came up. And uh, so now I'm ready to go, right? So I start class and I'm barely into it. And I get, Gabriel, we're kind of old school. So we have those little welcome cards that you, uh, uh, or visitor cards, whatever, that you fill out and you stick it in the collection plate as it goes by and kind of gives us a record of who is there or if you have any needs. And Gabe has taken one of those and written on the back of it. And uh, I'm sorry, Gabe, but the handwriting just terrible. So I could barely read it. I had to get closer and he's got it held up and it says, your zipper is down. Yeah, slick. The funny thing is the kid told me he noticed it before class started, but forgot to say something. Ah. So I got a couple of options. I can walk to the back and try to be coy about it or I can just turn around and handle my business and tell everybody what I was doing and I took option B and just figured oh well suck it up and forget about it thought I might give you something to look at while I finish this up these thoughts we'll test out this dead cat microphone cover on this uh, mic on this yeah microphone cover on this microphone smooth Anyway, not far from the house. Not a bad place to come. Walk around, get away. I noticed I'm walking with a little bit of a limp, just sort of some pain in my hip and I realized uh, it's because of the third thing that happened yesterday morning so I get done with preaching and uh, we get done with the Lord's Supper at church and I'm standing in the back and there's a little man who's not much more than a year old who likes to uh, uh, likes for me to hold him so I'm holding him in the back standing up and my sister takes off sort of runs out or hurriedly leaves 
the auditorium and heads downstairs. And I think, man, maybe something's wrong. So after she heads down the steps, which is like a couple of turns and a couple of platforms, I take off with little man with Bowen. And uh, we head down the steps and I thought I was at the last step. You know how that goes. And down I went, 280 in a small hallway, bounced off two walls, hit the door, glasses fell off. Never hurt the kid, spared him for sure. His grandma comes running down to check on me and half the people up there heard this big banging around. So <laughs> what you gotta do, you, you start thinking of verses like uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 12, therefore let's, uh, let he who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And I didn't and down I went. So between the coffee and the zipper down and all that, you, you put your pride in check. You start thinking, uh, you, you just gotta admit it. Yeah, I fell down the stairs. Yeah, I left my zipper undone. Yeah, I had to change my shirt because I spilled coffee because I backed into a pole, a light pole. And uh, that's how the day went. Now, where does all that come in? Well, that can uh, cause you a lot of embarrassment. As I've gotten older, it hadn't bothered me quite as much. Hadn't, uh, you know, to admit that I'm stupid or do stupid things or whatever. To some degree, we all care about what people think. And that was where my pride and my ego had to be put in check yesterday. And I know some of you are saying, uh, oh no, I don't care what nobody thinks about me. Shut up. Yeah, you do. In some way, shape, or form, maybe not as much as I have or other people have but you care. And why do you think I'm out here in the, what looks like the middle of the woods, away from everybody else? Because I'm not, still not comfortable uh, out videoing in front of people. And I'm worried about what they think. To some degree, you know, you worry about what, you, you're concerned about what people think. But then it gets to conformity. I'm told in Romans 12 and verse one, not to be conformed or do not be conformed to this world. Don't make myself look like everybody else don't look for everybody else's approval around me, but instead be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Silly, yeah, it's just a fun way to share with you some of the dumb stuff that I got myself into yesterday. Uh, is it a stretch? No, because at the end of the day, it still comes back to what people think. And I'll tell you the first things that ran through my mind in explaining how I got coffee all over myself or explaining uh, about how I went down the steps so rapidly. And I'm ashamed to say the first thing that went through my mind was how am I gonna explain this away? No, because you want people to think you're okay. You want people to uh, approve. And even in, I went down. Even in some small way uh, that illustrates the need to, or the, the feeling of a need to conform. One of the hardest things in the world is just to be you, even as dumb as that is sometimes. All right, I hope this helps in some way. Maybe gave you a little laugh. Shows you how silly I can be at times. You guys have a good day. It's cold out here and I'm out. I want you to subscribe. I'm asking you to subscribe. And I'm asking this car to go in reverse too. I'm asking you to comment. A lot of you will comment talking to me or talking to other people. Comment on the video down below. Go down there and comment. Like, dislike, get engaged. You some of you have told me that the music is too loud. Some of you have told me that uh, maybe you should try this. Comment, engagement, it helps. You conform in some ways. What areas is it that you need to stop conforming, that you need to start being the individual that either God wants you to be or being the individual that you want to be because some of you may not be Christian and, and may not subscribe to uh, godliness at all. But what is it you need to stop doing to gain other people's approval or to have them uh, not look at you weirdly? Really?